VC took a boat trip to see the warships, meeting for lunch beforehand, then embarking from the Barbican. The weather forecast was set to be squally but the weather system had tracked eastward leaving Plymouth in warm sunshine. Leaving behind the National Marine Aquarium, the members settled themselves on their upper deck to enjoy the boat trip. and all sorts of boating activity takes place ranging from jet skiing, sailing as fast as the wind will allow or sailing for pleasure. At the other end of the sound, the cruiser entered the Tamer estuary, also known as the Hamos, marked by the Royal William Yard. Once a victualling yard for the Navy, it is now being redeveloped into shops, galleries, apartments and restaurants. Yachts make luxury craft for the world market and here is an example of the type of boats they produce. Guarding the Royal Naval Dockyard is a statue of William of Orange, locally known as the King Billy. At this place, the old yard begins and the statue is lovingly preserved in bright colors. Tamer is a busy harbour with all sorts of small vessels flying up and down the river past the warships. This red brick building wedged between the older South Yard and the newer North Yard is the Swan. In Nelson's day, if the Navy needed crew, any able-bodied male, up to the age of 65 and suffering from the excesses of alcohol, could be pressed into service. A sharp knock on the back of the head did the trick, and the unsuspecting drinker would wake up aboard one of his majesty's ships. There is public access to the water between the two yards where the Tour Point Ferry plies the river. The three floating bridges are pulled across by chains. In the North Yard, a fleet of submarines are tied up in the inner harbour and only the conning towers are visible. This vessel saw action in the Falkland Island conflict and is reputed to be the submarine to have sunk the Belguano. This fleet of nuclear submarines are decommissioned but, owing to the way that nuclear fuel decomposes, it will be a 30-year wait until the reactors are safe, enough to dismantle. Reaching the end of the North Yard, it was time to turn the boat round and head back. Notice the spectacular clouds looking up the winding course of the Tamer. Herring girls came to play on the wind and it was fascinating to see the beauty of the flight.
glass Mount Edgecombe. Now a country park, but once a stately home. It is reputed that Hitler wanted this as his mansion when he successfully invaded Britain. It's a pity he didn't inform the Luftwaffe as the building received. A direct hit and was completely demolished. Only part of the building survives today and even that was totally reconstructed after the war. Back into the sound, in the distance is the Mewstone. Heading back past the Ho is another relic of World War II. This white building is all that remains of Plymouth Pier, which was destroyed in the Blitz. The large fortification is the Citadel, which was completed under instruction from Charles II. for organizing the boat trip. There's only one thing left to do. Have a cup of tea to finish off the day. www.plymouthivc.org